Well, the song sampled Under Pressure by uh, David Bowie and Freddie Mercury. Back then, no one cleared any samples because there weren't enough <laughs> albums to sell to even go through the effort of suing anybody. But this song went gigantic. Yes. And David and Freddie said, hey, we want, we want some of that money. Yeah. So that's funny because you, you thank you for saying that and understanding that. So many people don't understand it, that hip hop was there before my record. They think I'm the first person to ever sample a song and make a hip hop song out of it. And I'm not. EPMD did it a decade before me. Yeah. You have Run DMC doing it. But then I realized that I'm the first one to cross over. If you're the first one to cross over into the pop market, then they think you're the first one to sample a record. They've never considered listening to hip hop before. And now that they're listening to it for the first time, they think, wait a minute, I've heard this song. It sounds like Queen under pressure. <laughs> and uh, it was. So they opened up an entire building on Avenue of Americas in New York City. On, and it had a big thing on the top called sample clearances, <laughs> all because of my record. Yes. I'm talking every floor and we're talking 100 floors. Unbelievable because of me? And that's the enormous uh, amount of records I was selling. And I'm like, well, why didn't you go after Run DMC? And I looked at the record sales, it says gold, which at the time, 500,000 for a hip hop record, you can go back, that was big, very successful. Yes. You have to understand we are the generation that hip hop was invented in. So we watched it grow from zero sales to 500,000. Oh my God, Run DMC is the top, right? Like killing it. Mm -hmm. And they had to give all their publishing away to Aerosmith to be able to pull that off. But look yeah. at the notoriety. It br brought them to the top of hip hop, you know, by just doing something genius. And uh, everybody was sampling and I just did what I was influenced by, right? So sampling was part of hip hop and it still is. I mean, Puff Daddy did it even after, they still do it. Even after the lawsuits, they're still doing it. Yes. Some of them are doing it illegally. Like what happened to Big, uh, 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 Marquis. Big and Thick, Big Marquis, yeah. uh, uh, all these guys, uh, uh, Rit, uh, God, man, it's just unbelievable. What did, um, the Marvin Gaye has been getting paid a lot oh, since yeah. his uh, death. Oh uh, yeah, Blurred Lines. Oh my God. Yeah, and Robin Thicke. the recent one he just got with uh, Ed Sheeran. Oh yeah, got a piece he of that too. He got that one too. Yep. 100%. Yeah, not, like, not, not it's not about sampling it. anymore. It's about the feel of the song. It's if gotten it even more serious. It resembles it in any way. Exactly. You've stolen their idea. Yep. So sample clearances is a big thing. And mechanical clearances now have become a big thing because you can replay it and they think that they're not going to steal. Yeah. And that's what they steal to get you. Well, what's interesting was that, you know, you went back and, you know, you gave them the credit for the song. But then I guess at one point you realized it was easier just to buy the song as opposed to just license it. So you have a piece of under pressure that you own. Oh, absolutely. So do you own the whole song? Yeah, it was better to actually buy the publishing because at the time I didn't know how this worked. Yeah. So uh, if you go way back, you might remember, this is how I learned. Michael Jackson was going against um, uh, the Beatles. Yeah. Paul McCartney yep. for the publishing of the Beatles. And I go, wait a minute. How come Paul McCartney don't have the right to just have that anyway? Why is he trying to buy his own music back. I don't get that. What's that mean? Publishing. I was young and I didn't, and I, and I saw Michael Jackson own it. Yep. And publishing is a very difficult thing. Once the people own it, they don't want to sell any part of it ever yeah. because it's a long-term faucet it's of money coming money. in forever. Yeah. So I realized, oh, so publishing, that's what it is. And I learned at a young age, most artists have still have no idea what publishing even means or how it works or the business behind it or anything. Mm -hmm. And then those people are probably being ripped off right now, 90%. So I found out about that and I go, so wait a minute, I'm going through a lawsuit. It's going to cost me $4 million to just buy the song. And because Freddie Mercury died and David Bowie died, so neither Brian May doesn't have much of the publishing. He just played a guitar part. The publishing part of a, of a guitar part is like crumbs. He'd rather take the $4 million bucks and, and, and just give that song to Vanilla Ice and let it play and have a fun with it since so I you bought it took for it to number million. one anyway. Okay. And we became friends and everybody knows I'm a huge Queen fan. Freddie Mercury is the rock god, okay? I love that band and always have and I think everybody kind of has uh, grown with them too. So when, when I did it in my way and put it in hip hop, man, I mean, it was only, it was necessary. It was, it was needed and it helped, helped Queen too, you know, uh, help their fan base be youthful and regenerative so it you know pushes their whole thing that they're doing so every time under pressure or ice ice baby gets played in a movie on a commercial whatever a I check get, goes to you 100 percent. love it love it <laughs>
Okay, so here you are. You're going multi. I also bought my publishing too. So. Oh, you bought your own publishing back also. Oh yes, how much that cost of you? It. Millions. Millions. <laughs> Man, but it's made me hundreds of millions. Okay. So it's a, it's a big you know it's a trade out. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our artists would rather take the uh, seven years. Every seven years, what happens is is it comes back up. Uh, their publishing has to come back to them, and then the, whoever owns it gets a chance to you know republic uh, with them for another seven years, and uh -huh. then they'll get paid for that. So they'll get an advance. And somebody will say, here, I'll give you for your publishing, let's just say probably, because Old Dirty Bastards got publishing. It's selling somewhere, right? Like, where is it selling to? Who's getting the checks? Somebody is. Somebody has to, you know, do that publishing every year. Uh, and that, that money is going to come in forever. So, you know, that's an important thing to, to understand and, and know how your publishing goes because the checks get much bigger. But most people can't afford to buy their own publishing. And it's not for sale. Some people will buy it for a long term, you know. Uh, BMG has Elvis Presley and they'll never sell it. And every Christmas they'll release another Elvis Presley album and make a hundred million dollars. You know what I mean? So the strength behind BMG record label is the publishing of Elvis. Mm -hmm. So every time they fail on a new artist that they, they didn't get their advance back from, it didn't sell like they thought, no big deal. Let's throw an Elvis album out. It'll cover every expense <laughs> and everything we ever had because we own Elvis publishing. Forever. Well, guess who owns freaking Beatles? Uh. All of that Beatle money is going to Michael Jackson. And guess who owns Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson, too. Yeah. So all that goes to him as well. You want to talk about a money faucet? Yeah. Michael Jackson had his publishing things correct. 